Hi guys, welcome to the second video of my series Mixed Media Basics. Now, if you have not seen my first video, I will link it right now somewhere on the top right corner so that you can check out the first video. But basically, uh, what the video is going to be all about is that I have started a new series called Mixed Media Basics where I talk about the most basics of mixed media. Like, you know, there are certain techniques that we always do whenever we are doing a lot of mixed media projects, etc. So a lot of time you see that in a lot of tutorials that are out there, a lot of uh, online tutorials, YouTube tutorials, Instagram tutorials, etc. But sometimes you uh, just don't know why people are doing it or, you know, why should I do it? What if I don't do it? What if I skip a particular step, etc, etc. So I just thought that, you know, uh, let's revisit the basics before we get into more complicated mixed media projects. And that is why I'm starting this uh, series and I will be adding new videos now and then. So my first video was on why Gesso. Again, it will be linked somewhere on the top right corner right now. So if you are interested, you can definitely check that out first and then come back to this video. Now, the second video that I thought uh, I would make is that how to revive texture paste because I live in a country uh, which is India and it is a very sun rich country. Um, and normally, out of 12 months, nine months, we uh, get very hot climate, especially in Mumbai, where I live in India. And it is a very humid climate where, you know, uh, like uh, it is very hot throughout the year most of the time so in such places i have had issues of my texture paste drying up irrespective of the brand so i have had this issues with indian brands with uh, us brands with uk brands even with some of the chinese brands etc so you know it is a as far as i could understand from my 12 years of experience of mixed media because that was the first thing that i started was that there is an issue with the climate that we live in, you know, that over the period of time, a lot of moisture gets uh, dried up in steam and then it gets dried up from the paste because of the heat that we get in this country. I'm sure this could be the case in a lot of other countries too, depending on what kind of temperatures they face, etc. So uh, normally there are some tips and tricks that I do to make sure that, you know, my paste gets revived and, you know, uh, I don't have to waste a lot of texture paste because believe me, I have thrown in, thrown out one, one kg box full of texture paste of big, big US, UK brands because they dried up eventually over the period of time. Now, things like texture paste, etc. If you are like me, you know, uh, like I like, like for a couple of days, I would do card making for a couple of days, I would do, um, decoupage for a couple of days I would do mixed media for a couple of days I would do art journaling and so on so what happens is sometimes certain products stay in my storage for a couple of months or more depending on when I go back and use them so within that time I don't want those things to dry up because of the climate that I live in so uh, over the period of time with a lot of trials and errors, believe me, there were a lot of trials and errors. But unfortunately, uh, or fortunately, I had to do some research and I came up with the solution which works for me. Because in the end, I did not want my expensive art supplies to simply dry out on me and go to waste. So I'll be sharing those tips and tricks with you. And right now you're already seeing what I'm doing. But uh, you will see that right now it is still lumpy and over the by the end of this video, everything will become smooth. So the first thing that I want to talk about is that things like gesso, acrylic gel, uh, chalk paints, texture paste, etc. For most of the brands, like the brands that I have used, US brands, UK brands, uh, as I said, Indian brands, most of these brands have water based gel in it as the base. So what happens is that they react with water, okay? They don't need any solvents or things like that because they are not oil-based, they are water-based. So the easiest or the most common way in which you can revive most of the things with items that is easily available is mineral water or purified water. 
So uh, why I say this is because I have tried this with drinking water. I have tried this with tap water. And I have also tried this with bottled water like Bisleri or, you know, other brands of mineral water that you get out in market. So what has happened is the ones where I had added tap water uh, or, you know, drinking water, regular drinking water, uh, because it is not purified, probably I'm not sure what is the purification process of water. But yeah, because they are not like mineral water. Over the period of time, I found that, you know, even though it softens my paste and everything, there are chances that if the climate is too humid, if it is too rainy, you may end up with molds or algae or moss on top of it, you know, uh, getting that bacteria, etc. on top of it, which nobody likes. So that is why I say that uh, if you want to, uh, like, you know, if your paste is semi-hard, like, right, like how you see in the video, right? Most of my paste had gone a bit dry and crumbly because uh, I think it's been almost six to eight months since I last used uh, this paste. And when I had last used this paste, I had kept it open for a long time because I was working on a big project, which took me three, four hours. And uh, while I was working on it, uh, it started drying due to the my fan was on, my AC was on, etc. And plus, over the period of time, since I did not add a bit of water in it before closing the lid, so I will be, you know, sharing further tips and tricks with you. But because I did not add any water in it at that point of time, uh, over the period of six, eight months, it has dried up on me. Now, if it is completely rock hard, like, you know, it is like a, a stone, then in that case, uh, whatever you do, it will not revive. You can try it out, but uh, uh, once it is dry, since these are all acrylic uh, based gels, you know, uh, irrespective of the brand again, once it is dry, it is completely dry, like it is waterproof. So even if you add water, it's not going to help. Only in condition like right now, you can see the brown paste is where, you know, it is it is very hard, but it is not dry. So you need to understand the difference between being hard and stiff and thick and it being dry. So it is right now very hard and I still have a chance to revive it. So you can see this is a very old set of mine. Like I, uh, it's a very old set. I especially got it out for this video. And uh, it's been six, eight months I have used it. And you can see I have removed all the foils from all the paste. Because I think this was the first set that I started experimenting with. And, you know, um, I was too excited and I removed all the foils. So any paste that you get, like most of the brands that I have bought from, they have a foil, like a press and seal kind of a foil that you get on the top of the uh, bottle. So once you open the lid, you will have to open that foil. Now, never throw that foil away, you know, keep that foil. Yeah, it's a nuisance whenever you want to use it. And, you know, that foil, foil gets into the way, etc. I completely understand. But keep that foil. Uh, just cut it around the foil and whenever you want to use, just uh, put the foil aside, like open it half or three fourth the way, then use it and before closing the lid, put the foil back again and then close the lid. One thing what that will ensure is that, you know, uh, it provides as a resistance layer for so that the heat cannot get into your bottle and it can save from the moisture of your paste so that, you know, it does not get evaporated. So definitely keep those foil. Don't throw it away like how I did here. In my future paste, I normally keep them and I don't throw them away. So I have also tried this with uh, some glycerin. So I use a combination of water and glycerin or I use glycerin. Right now, since I'm in lockdown, I could not find either. And you can see that, you know, I just use regular tap water. But what I'm going to do is this paste is going to be used within a month. I have a couple of projects lined up where I'll be using them. So I'm not worried about it catching mold or anything. However, uh, you know, since you want it to last longer, make sure that you use glycerin which you can get in any medical shop, you know, just go to your local medical shop and ask them for glycerin and they'll give you glycerin. Add that with a little bit of mineral water and just, you know, poke your paste like how I'm doing with spatula and add that. And if your paste is too dry, do one thing, add a little bit like three, four, six drops, depending on how hard your paste is. Now you can see the amount of water I have added over here. 
Now I have added a lot of water because I wanted a more of a liquidy paste right now because I want I plan to do a lot of blending etc. So you know I did not want a very thick paste, but depending on the consistency that you want to once you mix everything together, you can add the amount of water. So I think probably one small uh, scoop or one small lid of water, like the bottle lid that you get regularly, you can add that one small lid of uh, mineral water and a little bit of glycerin drop. And uh, if it is very hard, just poke a few uh, holes in it, put this water and glycerin in it and uh, close the lid and, you know, let it be there for a day or two. What will happen is this will give the medium a chance to soak in all that water and glycerin. So, you know, over the period of time, it will start retaining its moisture. After a day or two, you will automatically see that it has softened a bit. And then once you start maneuvering with spatula, like how I'm doing over here, it will start mixing. And then depending on right now, like how I'm adding more and more water or less water, you can add more water or less water depending on how thick or thin you want the paste to be. Now, again, a thing to note, the most important thing to note is I am using tap water right now. Please don't do that. Right now, I'm in a lockdown and unfortunately, I could not go down and get uh, mineral water. So I'm just using my uh, this uh, water, which I regularly get at my home. But uh, please use either glycerin and uh, mineral water. Mineral water is must because, uh, as I said, you know, most of the brands are water based uh, mediums. So they will react with water easily and glycerin will help you with the smoothness of the paste. So it is easier for you to revive. So use a combination of both or one or two. Do some trial and errors on your own way. See how what works for you. And uh, like, you know, I have had this issue probably, I think, with uh, four or five of my paste, uh, like between a couple of brands. And I have used this and I was able to revive most of them except one or two, which were so dried, which where, you know, I had to throw them and there was no other option. So uh, it's a good, as we all know, right, our supplies are expensive and nobody wants to throw away the supplies which you have bought with uh, your hard-earned money. So use this technique uh, and you will see the difference. Also, one more trick that I use is that uh, whenever... Uh, I'm done with work like uh, let's say right now I'm using moss paste and uh, so this is moss effect paste by craft angles which I'm reviving right now all the four colors now once I'm done with the video and you know if probably if it took me four or five hours to use this and there is still a little bit left what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a little bit of water like four or five drops uh, so that it covers the top layer of the paste and it creates that protective layer of water on top of this paste so that you know once I keep it back in lid and over the period of another six eight months if I don't use it due to the heat the water that will evaporate will be then uh, you know uh, the water I have added will then act as an added moisture and it will revive the paste within the bottle itself. And I don't have to worry about my bottle getting dry. So this will happen when, you know, you are using one paste over the period of after eight, nine months, you use it. And then you again, you know, store it and use it after eight, nine months or things like that. Normally, if you use it every week or every month, you should not have this issue. However, again, if you are living in a very hot climate like how I do, and if you have that issue, you can definitely use all these tips and tricks that I'm sharing with you and it will work out. So uh, one thing is um, add some water first and with some glycerin. So the water should be mineral water. If it is extremely dry, poke some holes, put it in the bottle, put the water plus glycerin in the bottle, close the lid and keep it for a day or two. Let it revive the moisture and then, you know, you start poking and mixing and make it the consistency you want. So the amount of water and the amount of glycerin that you add will depend on how thick or thin you want the paste and how much your paste has dried out. So unfortunately, there is no formula or fixed uh, ratio that I can give you. So it will all depend on your paste, your brand, how, how much it has dried out, etc., etc. 
and the uh, second thing is that you know whenever you are using uh, your paste and you don't keep it open a lot like whatever you want to use remove it in a plate or a pallet if uh, if you know you find it it gets dried due to the fan or ac that is all so do that you can also do that and the third thing is that before closing the lid if it ha- you have kept it open for 2 3 hours make sure that you know you add some uh, mineral water or and glycerin on top of it before you close the lid if you don't plan to use it again for a couple of months what that will do is that will retain the moisture of your paste and that will reduce the chances of your paste drying on you and in the end will save you a lot of bucks so uh, that was the video for today guys i hope you enjoyed and you know you learned some tips and tricks on how you can revive your paste and you know how you can save your hard earned money and again these tips and tricks i have found works for me for many brands like um, a lot of us and uk brand i don't like to name any brands and you know uh, comment on anything because i have always been happy with the supplies that i have brought now if they dry it's not the issue of the brand it's uh, primarily the issue of the climate because i have seen the drying happens with a lot of brands in india and that is why you know i don't want to uh, name any brands and uh, this formula that i work which is glycerin plus water has worked with me for lot of brands you know not just craft tangles and it will work with for you as well unless your paste is completely dried if your paste is completely dried then there is no option unfortunately you will have to throw it but hopefully you'll use these tricks in future and they will save you some money so that was the second video of our mixed media basics uh, series i hope you enjoyed if you uh, want any particular videos you know any particular uh, basic questions that you want answered etc do let me know i will surely make videos on those you know uh, on a platform like youtube you guys have an opportunity where you can write in comments that what you want to see next you know what kind of questions you want to get answered to so definitely use that opportunity to learn and to know more about the products in my upcoming videos i'll be uh, of the mixed media basic series i will be discussing the pastes the set of paste uh, like the moss paste the rust paste the patina paste and i'll be discussing on how they are different from textures and why you know how different effect you get with them like not they are not your usual chalk paints or texture paste how they are different etc so i hope uh, you'll enjoy this series and i'll see you in my next video until then please take care and be safe